So the Solar Auxilia is coming in plastic. Awesome. This box is now available from pre-order from Games Workshop. Thank you to Games Workshop for sending it through to me. And it got me thinking. It got me looking at the codex. Got me thinking about how I would build a Solar Auxilia army if I built a Solar Auxilia army. Now at this stage, I'm not saying I'm gonna. I might. But what I might do, which is a better idea, is encourage so Sultan. Sultan can build the Solar Auxilia army. And then we get to see it on the channel. And he, he loves the Solar Auxilia. He likes tanks. So then what should I encourage Sol uh, Sultan to get? Well, I think if you're going to get a Solar Auxilia army, you're going to need at least three boxes of these, maybe more, because you're going to need a lot of infantry. You're going to want a couple of tanks. And that Trakosian armor transport, well, you're going to need at least three of them as well. Basically, if you start collecting Solar Auxilia, you're going to be very poor. Um, <laughs> it's a high model count army. You're going to need lots and lots of things. Maybe two of these minimum to start with and then just lean into the tanks and things but this video is my take on what i would do what i'm thinking of doing what I, what i would do how to go about based on my knowledge of playing horus heresy i played over 100 games 2.0 haven't played against solar auxilia haven't played with solar auxilia but there's a, a, a chunk of knowledge there and the knowledge kept coming what kept coming back to me when i was looking through the book is Dreadnoughts and Primarch. Solar Auxilia, playing them is playing 40k on hard mode, a bit like playing the Admech. And if you brought Solar Auxilia along, how would you deal with Dreadnoughts and Primarchs? Because they are a thing. Now, the way to normally deal with Dreadnoughts is to throw other Dreadnoughts at them. Uh, dreadnoughts cancel out Dreadnoughts. You can tie them up with Cataphracty. You can throw a Primarch at them. Or well, Graviton weapons work very well as well. Plasma also works very well. There's, there's, Dreadnoughts are strong, and I like the fact that they're strong. I like the fact that they're not standing at the back just shooting away. Instead, they're getting up there causing all sorts kinds of ruckus. And being super strong isn't a problem for me because I like the way that the rules around Horus Heresy are written around the narrative. Dreadnoughts are supposed to be super strong. They're supposed to go through a unit of 10 tacticals. They're supposed to tie up terminators and slowly club them to death that's what they're supposed to do the rules are written with a narrative in mind and of course you have access to as many dreadnoughts as your opponent has access to you have access to a whole right of war if you want to bring dreadnoughts but what do the solar auxilia have well they're gonna be okay versus anti-infantry they should they have lots of blast markers with their artillery with their tanks they have a metric ton of shots they might be las gun shots but they can put out a volume of fire which should alarm most infantry, plus they can wrap up stuff, they can bubble wrap stuff. Uh, Anti-tank shouldn't be too much of a problem either because they have lots of tanks. Uh, the only thing they might struggle with again, is flare shielded Spartans and Kratos and things like that, but everyone struggles against them. You need to get close, you need to get melters, or you need to get side shots in. Um, but they have access to a lot of anti-tank, they have access to a lot of anti-infantry, Anti-high wound stuff, however, anti-dreadnoughts, anti-galvaback, anti-stuff like that. Well, there's no graviton in the list. There's no dreadnoughts you can throw at them. You're certainly not going to chuck a heavy walker at them because they're just roadblock units. So what do you do? Was the what, what is the better way of running a solar auxilia list, in my opinion? Or rather, how do you mitigate for some of the strengths that the legionary forces have? And how can you give some solar auxilia teeth? Well, first up, you need this book here. This is the Libra Imperiarum. It's also got the rules for custodies and assassins. Uh, but this is where you get the rules for the solar auxilia. And solar auxilia have access to tertios. They have access to cohort doctrines. Uh, they don't get right of wars. They come together in cohorts. Looking through the cohorts, there's a couple that really stand out. Again, this is my opinion. Please feel free to comment below about other cohorts uh, which really stand out for you. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to tell the community what you think is a, a really good way of running them. But the, the first one, the solar pattern cohorts, the cohort doctrine, this is the one that uh, started at the very, this was from the very start of the Horus Heresy. This is how they initially formed and you can bring veteran squads, veteran tertios, as troop choices and give them line. Why is this one good? Well, standard solar auxiliary infantry, they're not good. For, they're, they're humans 
and they're fighting transhumans. They're going to die very quickly. The main thing they're good for is bringing big squads of 20 stubborn or fearless guys or even without the... They're, they're good for wrapping stuff up and slowing down the transhumans for hitting the big expensive things behind them. Um, they're not great at killing, but this, this detachment bringing auxilia vetaris velatar you can bring the elites as troops and elites have a bit more teeth they can come with the axes they can come with they, they hit better they shoot but it's a way of bringing plasma vets in it's a way of bringing troops in that can do some real damage nowhere near as much damage as space marines can do but at least a lot more damage than 20 guys with las guns however if you want to bring 20 guys with las guns then take a look at the reborn cohorts this one's really good this is really strong because it gives your whole army plus one leadership and the stubborn special rule um, all the infantry plus one leadership and the stubborn special rule this would be very good for bringing a hundred plus units of solar or not units but models of solar auxilia that are standing in front of your artillery and standing in front of your tanks stubborn with increased leadership means they're not breaking as easy means they're not pinning as easy means that they're going to tie up space marines a bit longer this is actually quite a good a viable anti-dreadnought tactic as well 20 of these guys are wrapping up a dreadnought at leadership eight stubborn or leadership nine stubborn if you've got um some hqs in there as well is is a strong choice in my opinion this is perhaps the strongest horde build out there just those leadership modifiers are juicy of course there's the armored fist pattern cohort tanks lots of tanks we like tanks this one's strong this one is perhaps strongest if you bring their solar auxilia as an ally detachment and you want to add some tanks to your legion uh, forces or your custodies forces but uh, we raven guard for example might definitely almost certainly get a unit of armored fist pattern cohorts to add in with my raven guard but yeah tanks we like tanks and talking about allies i don't know why you wouldn't run solar auxilia with mechanicum if you want to bring mechanicum along or mechanicum with solar auxilia if you want to bring them along just bring along the two separate detachments but if you wanted to bring them along as one single detachment then you can bring the iron pattern cohort and that allows you to take castlax manipoles and thalax squads as elite choices um, I would be taking the Thalax squads as elite choices here because they have line. So all of a sudden you can have your tanks, you can have your Ogrins, you can have your artillery, you can have your troops and your normal troops, your uh, cellar auxiliary troops. Well, they're not going to be doing much killing, but your Thalax squads have got a lot of movement with their Inculum jetpacks. They move 13 and then shoot and then move again. They can bring a lot of killing to the table because you can give them photon thrusters. You can give them multi-melters. You can also load them up with melter bombs if you want to. So all of a sudden, you've got some fast-moving line options zipping around that are fairly good anti-tank. And at Toughness 5 with three wounds, they're line guys that won't die very quickly. It's a way of adding more line to your army. Do you need it in Solar Auxilia? You should have lots of infantry. But it's a way of adding line, more line to your army, which is a bit more resilient than the squishy line that you normally have. There are eight cohorts in total. There's a couple more that do uh, stand out for me. But the two that really stand out for me was the first and second that I said. The one where you can t take Felataris Tertios as troops, the Solar Pattern cohorts, the ones where you can take elites as troops, and the one where your all your infantry, the reborn one, gets plus one leadership and stubborn. Those two really stand out for me. So let's talk about what I would do. The Auxilla Tactical Command Tertio. Here are your plasma vets. You can take a command section, you can take two companion sections, and all of these guys can take plasma, and all of them hit on threes, and plasma kills everything, including dreadnoughts and terminators and this is the stuff that is going to be these are your hqs and they're going to be killing the elites in the space marine armies that you go up against and i feel like these are a must include as i said playing solar auxiliary is playing horus heresy on hard mode and you're okay for anti-infantry you're okay for anti-tank but what have you got for anti-elite well plasma get lots of plasma i'd be hard pressed not to recommend getting uh, the full three units of these and adding 30 plasma to your army whatever army that you're taking 
You can bring the Dracozen Armoured Transport, which comes in the box. If you put a flare shield on it and a dozer blade, and let's face it, you're probably going to need those things, a dozer blade to get them where they need to be so they don't get immobilised, and a flare shield to get that front armour up to 14. It'll cost 205 points, which is a lot of points. Um, yeah, if you put the battle cannon on it and make it even more expensive... Uh, or you can just run these guys up the table or put them in the little Arcus transport for 30 points each. But you're going to need them. You're going to want some transports for them. These guys busting forward, selling their souls and trying to take out the anti-elites. Or you could leave them as counterpunch units, wait for the Terminators and the nasty stuff to come to you, stay hidden in buildings and then jump out and nuke them, nuke them there. Next, you have the Velataris Tertios, which you can take as troops line if you take that first cohort that we mentioned. And you can take up to five units of these in one elite choice, making them score. Beautiful. But these are very interesting because they all come with Volkite. So lots of Volkite charges, hitting on threes instead of fours. Volkite by it's going to be more reliable anti-infantry bringing these guys along than just guys with lads cannons. You're going to be wounding on threes instead of fives. You're going to be hitting on threes instead of fours. You get a, the math doesn't lie. The, these guys will be very good at taking out normal tactical marines, normal power armored squads. And then you can give a chunk of them storm axes if you want to. They're going to swing last. They're low initiative and they're going to swing badly. But they all have two attacks and they are all AP2. So you actually have got some close combat punch if you bring these guys with Storm Axes along. So we've got the Plasma Vets. We're going to bring along a couple of squads of these as well. Um, I'm going to mix and match. So try some out with some Axes. Try some out with some Volkite. See what works best for you depending on your regular opponents. And then lastly for close combat punch, you've got to bring an Ogryn section or two potentially. Now Ogryns are a bit of a lie. Um, <laughs> they've got a 4-up save and that feel no pain. They're a bit of a lie because they're going to slow down Terminators, um, but Dreadnoughts will go through them like a hot Dreadnought through butter. They do have Death Frenzy, so if they ever, I mean their leadership is crap, but if they ever fail their leadership, then you pick up an Ogryn model. You just lose an Ogryn models and have considered a partial leadership, be that to be overrun in the fight phase or be that losing leadership, 25% uh, casualties in the shooting phase. You just pick up an Ogryn with Death Frenzy, and then your re remaining Ogrins get an extra attack because they get very angry. And then if you lose a morale check again, pick up an og another Ogrin, everyone gets an extra attack. These guys are strength 7 AP 3, and they rend on a 6. So they're going to be good for normal power armored stuff. They're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some Terminators and slow them up because of their Death Frenzy ability and the sheer number of wounds that they have. But serious elite killing units that the Legion have, that Space Marines have, will get through these quite quickly. Grave Warden Terminators with Poisoned will get through them. Uh, Thunder Hammer Terminators will get through them quite quickly. They, they look really strong. They look like this is, this is the unit for you. And they are the toughest, strongest thing for Solar Auxilia. But there are some very hard counters against these if you're running Solar Auxilia. Now, they're not out in plastic at the time of making of this video, but I'm almost certain they will be. I have no prior information from Games Workshop, for just, but just looking through the pictures in the book. If you look through the Solar Auxilia section in the book, you can see the pictures that they took of the Lehman Rust tanks here. Bear in mind, this book came out, what, a year ago? It shows the new pattern tanks or the new design of the tanks with all the extra filigree around the edges. The pretty tanks that we're going to get in the box. Um, and the solar and the Ogrins as well, they look a bit shinier and have got more bits hanging on them than the uh, resin type stuff that you can currently get. So I would I would sit on your money and uh, wait for the Ogrin to come out in plastic, which will probably be 28 years time, knowing Games Workshop. But when they do come out in 28 years time, then buy a chunk of them, add them in. They're going to be fun no matter what. Next, you have your infantry tertio. You can be adding a lot of these, regardless of whether you get the armored fist attachment or not. You can bring a lot of line units for just one troop choice. In fact, if you max out your troop slot, you can get 24 line units. You're going to lose 20 of them during the course of a battle because they are just guard. They are just humans fighting transhumans. But you can get a lot of line units and you can get your... Solar Auxilia rifle sections up to 20 man strong. 
uh, with stubborn plus one leadership they're going to stick around or with some characters chucked in there or uh, vexillas chucked in there to make them it's the, the leadership buff their leadership with the things that you can so they hold the line longer than than they would typically these guys i wouldn't spend too many points on i would use them as screen i would use them as bubble wrap it's og guard tactics from seventh edition and earlier that's all you're doing with a rifle section and that's fine they're here to die uh there's many many humans in the grim dark future and their lives are expendable what isn't expendable is the uh, blessed tanks that stand behind them in the heavy slot armored tertios uh you can bring three layman russ strike squadrons in one heavy slot and each strike squadron can comprise up to three tanks so just one heavy slot you can fill lots and lots of lemon russ all over the place you're going to want lemon russ you're going to field lemon russ what types to take well there's two types in this particular slot you're going to want to load up with las cannons yes i know you can get the vanquisher cannon but that's only one shot and you can put auto cannons on these but i wouldn't just las cannons you're going to need las cannons bring as many las cannons as you can i'd bring gravis las cannons in the turret it's two gravis las cannons in the turret so that's four shot turret gun uh sponsoon uh, the hull mounted one on the front 160 points five las cannons i like it and make a squadron or make two squadrons we haven't added any las cannons to the type of list that we're going to bring yet so here you need to be shameless at all las cannons then you have the lehman russ assault squadron this is where you get demolishers from or plasma cutioners from i would be hard pressed not to recommend plasma cutioners in the solar auxilia uh, assault squadron slot one heavy slot gets you up to three tanks i like it add tanks i had a good look at the artillery tertio what kind of artillery is best and I d mm. what do you think answers on a postcard below but if i was doing it when i'm building a solar auxiliary army for the first time i would stay away from the artillery uh your last cannons are going to be better at hitting and killing tanks. Your last cannons are going to be better at hitting and killing terminators and dreadnoughts. Your last cannons are going to, last cannons are going to be better. I know you can bring a lot of artillery and a lot of blasts, but a lot of it is AP three or AP four or rending on a five or rending on a six. A lot of it relies on those good dice rolls when you're rolling to wound, and that isn't reliable to, um, enough for me. Not reliable enough for anti elite killing to my mind and you don't need to use them as anti-infantry killing because just naturally when you build the upper solar auxiliary army you're going to have lots of anti-infantry all over the place all your small arms all your plasma all your volkite all that sort of stuff you don't really need to add anti-infantry killing so i'd stay away from the uh, artillery tertio for now and instead i'd add a solar auxiliary rapier battery section and you can add a lot of these in the tertios and I'll add a lot of las cannons again. Now that's where I'd start. <laughs> and depending on how many tanks you've added, it's 2,000 odd points, I think. You could get this up to 3,000 odd points if you just bring plasma vets at the start or plasma command squads. You bring the veterans with the axes and the volkite. That's really good. You bring as many infantry as you can. Really good. And then you just add las cannons in the form of rapier batteries and Lehman Russ. You need a few Dracosian transports for your troops to run around in. Hence, you need a couple of these boxes. But I think that is a good start. Once you've got that down, I think you'll have a good core for your solar auxilia army. There'll be a fair amount of anti-infantry, fair amount of anti-elite, fair amount of anti-tank in there. And then add to that in the future if you want to add a lot of artillery in the future then add a lot of artillery in the future if you want to lean into the elite slot type thing and bring your ogrins along double the number of command squads you have for more plasma command squads running around plasma vets running around you can do that if you want to lean into the infantry with their plus one leadership stubborn stuff bubble wrapping all over the place you can lean into that it's the solar auxilia you could lean into lots of infantry if you want to and just play a game where you take some board control 
or is the Sol Auxilia. You could lean into tanks and artillery if you really want to with rapier batteries and have a lot of heavy armor. So much heavy armor that your opponent will struggle to deal with it because legionary forces do bring along anti-tank. Space Marine forces do bring along anti-tank. But they, most of the list I've played with or played against, you see three, four, you see a limit to the amount of anti-tank that your opponent has or that I deal with. And if you end up uh, fielding 10 Lehman Russ or artillery pieces or armored pieces, 10, 12 armored pieces against your opponent, they're going to really struggle against that high number of armor and are going to want to get in close combat with them to hit the sweet rear armor. They're going to want to try and punch them to death because shooting them to death just won't cut it. Horus Heresy is a game where it doesn't matter what the strength of your weapon is. If my armor value is more than... There's, there's many cases where you can't even hurt the thing that you're trying to kill in Heresy, which I like again. The rules are written with a narrative in mind. It's not 40k when... Uh, goblins can take down a warlord titan because sixes to wound always wound there's not a thing in heresy i don't care if you get sixes to wound it's a warlord titan you're not hurting it a couple of other things the malkador infernus is in here i can't wait to see that in plastic um awesome anti-infantry do you need it no is it cool absolutely there's the storm hammer super heavy tank in here as well lots and lots of anti-tank do you need it no is it cool definitely um, <laughs> you can get those as well it'll probably break your bank account but they're in here they're good and the new armored sentinel is that any good long story short not really they're like sentinels <laughs> so they're not very shooty they are terrible in close combat what they are are big chunky roadblocks that you can put forward and uh roadblock with or they've got an, an amount of movement their backfield suppressing units that you can move around and use as denial units later on in the game to stop your opponent scoring objectives they do have a leadership test though they do have leadership and they do come in squadrons so if you lose one or they, they're subject to all the leadership shenanigans that can happen in 40 uh, in horus heresy as well i like the fact they put the rules for them in this box set so in the pamphlet where you where it shows you how to assemble all the stuff, how to put tanks together, how to put your infantry together, at the very back, there is the page, the two pages, which talk about this thing. And I like the fact that there's a new unit that hasn't been included in any of the quote-unquote codexes so far. This is brand new. We haven't seen it before, which gives me hope that in the future for Horus Heresy, there's going to be some new plastic kits released maybe for the legions or the custodies or other factions as this game continues, as this game continues to evolve that we haven't seen the rules for yet that are going to be included in different box sets here, there and everywhere. I mean, this is the first official new rule unit thing that we've had since the game launched. Everything else has been included in the codexes oh, with the exception of Full Grim Trans. Okay, there's a few books that have come out expansion books that have come out with a couple of individual models in unique models in but apart from that what have the romans ever done for us now that's about it for this video i'm not going to go into all the other units and all the other things because this was a very specific video because it take a very long time and also i spent about four or five hours sat down with alex seo and a couple of a cup of coffee listening to the horus heresy on audible and searching through this book and thinking how to make solo auxilia effective and alex seo played guard back in seventh edition and earlier for a decade so he knows how to run og guard and the horus heresy system is built around the old og rules and he knows about plasma cushions he knows about plasma vets he knows about bubble wrapping he knows about hoarding stuff and we had a very good conversation about how to make solo auxilia sing in heresy 2.0 and i think i've highlighted them here you're going to want your plasma command squad teams. You're going to want some uh, veteran teams running around. And you're going to need as many lance cannons as you can get your hands on. It feels a bit dirty if you're a Space Marine player and you're bringing along um, an Armistos or Master of the Fleet and chucking them in with a unit of 10 lance cannon heavy support dudes. And they're suddenly they're hitting on twos 
and they can intercept and you can't shroud against it. It can feel very dirty in heresy very quickly, adding in some units and many, many LAS cannons. Solar Auxilia typically hit on fours. Their vets, their elites, they hit on threes, but typically hitting on fours. Your tanks are going to be hitting on fours. And they don't have access to as many juicy toys that the legions have. So being being shameless with your LAS cannons in a Solar Auxilia list is not necessarily a bad thing. And being shameless with Plasma Cutioners and with Plasma Command Squads running around is not necessarily a bad thing. You're going to need every single help you can get when you're fielding humans against transhumans. So if you started with that in mind, I don't think you can go wrong. Add as many infantry to taste. Add as much armor as you can to taste. What are your thoughts on the artillery? I don't think it's as killy as it could be. Fortunately, you can bring rapiers for days with las cannons, a perfect example of a glass cannon. They're going to hit like a mofo, but they're going to get removed very, very easily. At least rapier batteries can't be pinned. You've got that. And you can go close combat guard if you want to. I didn't talk about it, but there's a cohort where you get furious charge for guard. Furious charge for guard with lots of units with the storm axes is a very interesting idea, particularly if you add in lots of ogrins as well. And by lots, I mean at least four, five, six units with all the axes and at least two big units of ogrins. That's an interesting way of building guard as well. Close combat guard, maybe. Again, you're going to want to back that up with as many tanks as you can get your hands on. And lastly, I want to shout out the Legate Marshal. He's 85 points base, but you can turn this guy into an absolute beast. <laughs> you can give him a Cyber Familiar, a 3-up Invulnerable Save, a Power Fit. You can turn this, you can make a 160 point, 180 point model quite easily and have a diamond in a unit somewhere that can do damage in close combat and go toe to toe against some space marine veterans it's very interesting anyway those are my first thoughts on it how to make them strong after many hours of drinking tea and studying and things i'm going up against solar auxilia fairly soon actually after i've filmed this that video might actually be out by the time this comes out because of embargo dates and things but i'm going up against solar auxilia very soon very interested to See what my opponent brings and rattle his brain as well. If you play with the Solar Auxilia, played against the Solar Auxilia, what works, what doesn't work? Fill the comment section. There's going to be a lot of new Solar Auxilia players coming to Horus Heresy. And there's going to be a chunk of people buying the Horus Heresy boxes so they can convert and stick them into 40k. So if you've got any ideas, any thoughts, any feedbacks, any comments, please fill up the comment section and then... Um, hopefully there'll be a, a, a nice Bible of knowledge down there, a holy tome for our auxilia hopefuls that they can get sink their teeth into. And if you see any other comments that and you're a solo auxilia player or played against them that really sing to you, thumb them up, get them to the top of the comment section so that there's some useful information in there for people trying to start a solo auxilia army. Anyway, that's it for me. Happy Wargaming. gaming.